All right, everyone, we are here with football head coach Tyler Card for the 2024 football team preview. Tyler, thank you so much for being here. Steven, appreciate you having me. Absolutely. So let's get started. Um, this year, you know, with guys that you have coming back, um, the coaching staff you have coming back, we're going to talk about um, all of those things here soon. Um, but I want to talk about the end of last year where you guys get back-to-back -back wins to finish off the season, a big win at home against Methodist. What kind of momentum did that give the program going into the offseason and then going into this year? Yeah, that was great. Um, you know, it's tough when you start the season out going 0-8, um, but to see our guys strive through that and, and fight and, you know, pick up the momentum at the end – and come out in Southern Virginia, and we, you know, we set a couple school records there, uh, tied a school record with six touchdown passes, um, you know, and to go there and, and be my former alma mater was awesome and, and fun, and then to finish off at home for those seniors to get that win against Methodist is kind of, you know, we've been that close each year on, uh, did really help us in getting that momentum, and it was great because it got our guys excited for the off season. Um, going into the weight room, getting bigger, faster, and stronger, coming into uh, our spring ball and having a great uh, sessions there of us just working on the fundamentals and the little things we needed to focus on to get better. And you're really taking that momentum into recruiting as well because now you can sell that. You can tell, you know, talk about that excitement that, that happened right at the end and how we're going to continue to build off of it. And I think it's really helped us in bringing in some great players that we're very excited about and also bringing back the, the right players, uh, you know, on the team that are going to be doing some big things, you know. And uh, the way we finished and, you know, with some big records and stuff, that was that was great. Two wins for us. We're excited. Yeah, so now going into this year, uh, you've got a, a lot of returners coming back. Um, in particular, there's a handful that, you know, were selected, you know, to the all-conference team. Uh, on both sides of the ball, uh, special teams as well, yeah. um, that's, that are coming back this year. How important is it, again, you get that momentum off of the two wins last year, and then you've got a, a great group of guys coming back um, you know, this year you know, as upperclassmen. Uh, how important is it to have those guys return to keep that momentum going as well? Oh, that is huge. I mean, uh, defensively, we return uh, 10 out of 11 starters. Uh, we had one senior defense fan that graduated. Um, but other than that, we returned just about everybody. And this is a unit on defense that uh, we set or tied a school record with interceptions with uh, 17 on the year, which is first in our conference, ended up being uh, sixth in the country on that or seventh in the country. Uh, in total turnovers, we were first in our conference with eight, uh, 28 and uh, sixth in the nation at that. And then we even blocked uh, eight kicks last year, which tied for third in the country. So a lot to build off of. Um, and we had some recognition off of that. And on the offensive side, too, we had some guys, some great players that were able to get all conference. Um, Alec being all honorable mention. Uh, Ryan Buchanan getting second, second team. Uh, Jay Sean um, was able to get uh, first team return specialist. And then a host of guys on defense with uh, Larry Jones, defensive player, rookie of the year. Um, we had a couple second team guys. Jaden James, first team uh, corner. Uh, Will Pelthorpe being a second-team guy. Really, we hadn't had that number of all-conference guys since about 2015 at Greensboro College. And, uh, you know, that was kind of a neat thing. That was the last time the record was uh, set for interception. So now we got something to build on. Going into this year, none of that matters. You know, we've got to start from scratch. We've got to get everything going. Uh, you know, we've lost a couple of key guys on offense um, that we got to replace, some receivers, quarterback, uh, running back. Um, but we've got a great core coming back. Uh, most of our offensive line is back, uh, even including uh, Jacob Doolittle, who was a senior for us last year. He's got a medical year. He's coming back to help us anchor down that spot. But it's great to finally get some of that recognition for the things we're doing and, and how we're building this program here. Absolutely. So when we're talking about the roster, you know, you said you got 10 guys returning uh, starters on defense. Um, can, let's go into the defense a little bit because – you know, just watching them, especially as, as the year went on last year, you know, those last couple of games, like, they, they really turned it on. I mean, you've got, you know, Max Steele running around everywhere, you know, making tackles seemingly every play. Uh, Larry Jones, the, you know, you mentioned the rookie of the year. Um, Jaden Jaden, like, it, it, there, there's just names all over the board on that defensive side. 
So, you know, coming off of that year, you know, you know, now going into this this 2024 campaign, I mean, what are the expectations for that defense? Because on paper, it's pretty good. Yeah, uh, expectations are very high. You know, coming bringing that amount of guys back, and you know, even some of the guys that weren't starters had significant playing time for us last year. Um, you know, we've got some great depth at the division or at the, excuse me, the defensive line spot that we're excited about. Um, bring back, you know, Max and linebackers, some other guys ready to step up and make some plays. Um, and then our DBs, I mean, we've we've been loaded and, and blessed there with a lot of talent, a lot of different guys that played last year that made marks, that got interceptions, uh, made tackles for loss. So really the expectation is high. But the thing is they know that, um, you know, it's got to be about us being consistent. And it's got to be about us, you know, taking that next step. We can't be satisfied with where we started. We've got to go out and finish games. You know, we looked at, we made a lot of, you know, interceptions and big plays, things like that. But when it came down to we've got to be better in stopping the run, we've got to be better in overall pass defense and get, not giving up the big plays. And then we just got to stay that consistency and getting off the field. And uh, I think that's the thing that bit us last year is we're just uh, up and down a whole lot throughout the season as it went. But, yeah, I mean, I think the, the bar set high. Coach Terrain is a phenomenal defensive coordinator, can't say enough. He really – really instills a culture in that side of the football and bringing them all together and the belief they have in him and the way they play for him. It's a fun thing to watch, and it's great to see as a coach that, you know, that buy-in and how it comes. And like I said, our, our thing is, you know, we're all about competition. So, you know, just because you're a starter one week doesn't guarantee it next week. If you don't come out and do the things the right way and you don't perform in practice, someone else is going to take your spot, you know, and so it, it builds – that competitive nature and that, you know, never getting satisfied type of uh, atmosphere for us. Absolutely. Now let's go to the offensive side of the ball. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the key position battles is going to be quarterback. Uh, Alec Williams Carr graduated, had a great year last year. Uh, so tell me what you're looking forward to with the quarterback competition going into camp. Yeah. Uh, quarterback competition is going to be great. It's going to be wide open. You know, uh, we bring back Jaden Morrison, who uh, started one game for us last year, kind of on an unexpected uh, Alex Friday night injury. So he got thrown in the mix last minute. Um, but I'll tell you, that, that kid's tough. He hung in there, took some shots, made some throws and stuff, got some good experience at that time. Um, and then we got a couple of young guys that are going to be battling for it. Um, we brought in two more freshmen that we really like that bring some athleticism into that group as well. And uh, we have one transfer quarterback that's come in that uh, I'm excited to see how he comes in and competes for the spot. But those guys, it's wide open. They know they got to come in, and we're looking for somebody that's going to run the show, that's going to handle it, be that general out there, and, and take that offense where we need to be. So as you guys get into camp, um, you know, we talked about the defense and, you know, assuming, you know, kind of there's going to be some chemistry already there. On the offensive side, what do you, what's kind of the game plan as you go into camp with, you know, trying to figure out the quarterback position? There's some other potential position battles as well. How does – how do you, um, you know, look at that and, and, and develop that chemistry on the offensive side with some of those changes? Yeah, that's, that's a big challenge. That's the million-dollar question is uh, getting those guys together. One thing we've done well the last few years is really trying to focus on some team bonding moments, ways for our guys to get to know each other, to get to trust and, and build that camaraderie together because trust is a key thing in that locker room. you got to trust that your quarterback's going to make the right reads, that your receiver's going to make the right routes. Sometimes you throw the ball up, trust, and he's going to go make a play. Uh, and so uh, us building that trust together is huge. Um, we've had a bunch of guys this summer that have got together and thrown on the field, so that way they can kind of start to build that timing up. Um, but really it's getting them in and, and getting them on the same page, not trying to do too much, but trying to get really good at something. Absolutely. Now let's go to that third phase of the game, special teams. Uh, you've got Alex Moore coming back, um, and you've got some other guys coming back. Jay Sean Harris, again, like you yeah. know, we talked about, uh, made the uh, you know, uh, all-conference team last year as a returner. Um, so talk about your special teams. I mean, what are you looking for them? Uh, it's it's a uh, sometimes it can be an underappreciated part of the game, but it's a massive part. Um, you know, could potentially you know decide who wins or loses the game. So 
What are you looking for as we go into camp on the special team side? Yeah, um, very excited about that group. Yeah, like you said, Jay Sean Harris coming back after being, uh, you know, special team return specialist of the year. Um, that kid's going to do some great stuff. We're excited for him. He's been here working all summer, staying in contact with us. Um, really, it's to, to see some of those guys step up. You know, we, we do have Alex Mora, you know, looking to return. And then we got some young kickers coming back as well that uh, we're very excited about, um, you know, to really push him and uh, kind of up that game. Uh, we definitely want to build off of our PAT block system. You know, being able to be up there in the top five of the country in blocks is a big deal. And uh, so we're going to build off of that because that can help change the game. Uh, but really, uh, special teams is a big, important part to us. We're making sure it's an emphasis. Um, guys know that that's the quickest way to get on the field, to get on the bus. And so we're going to push them to be better this year and, you know, even tighten that up a little bit. And we're able to give, take one to the house last year, so now we got to do that more times a month. Absolutely. So let's transition into your schedule. Uh, you got a couple of non-conference games, of course. Start with the Super Bowl uh, yep. with Guilford. Um, Tell us uh, just a little bit about uh, your schedule this year, not conference and conference, uh, and just kind of what you're looking forward to those first few games because, you know, we talk with, you know, some other head coaches of other sports, how important it is to get off to a good start and, you know, the momentum that you could build, you know, if you do get off to a good start. So talk about the schedule a little bit and kind of what you're looking forward to. Oh, definitely. Uh, excited about our schedule this year. Um, it's kind of a strange year because we're going to have six home games, four away games. Uh, that's typically it's a five and five, but this year, last year, we're the opposite. Um, this year, we with all the home games, I think it's going to give us a definite advantage. Our guys love playing at home. Uh, they love, you know, being able to represent right here on campus. Uh, we're starting off with the Super Bowl at home, uh, big game. Always, uh, you know, the one that gets a lot of publicity and in-town rival. Uh, you know, we've played them tough the last three years, and all three years we've been – you know, high up in the first half and, you know, found ways to struggle in the second half. So this year we're looking to be able to close that game out all four quarters and make a big start there. Uh, then we got Avery comes down to us. Avery's a good football team. Uh, we went down there, played them tough last year. Um, they were very senior-led last year. And so um, now I think we're going to be a little more even playing field with that. And I, I think our guys can definitely compete. Again, another home game that's uh, going to give us some uh, excitement along the way. Um, and then the next two kind of build off of last year. We go to Methodist, and then we got uh, Southern Virginia at home for our homecoming. So we're looking to, you know, try to make a repeat there of those two wins and uh, get started off right into our bye week. Uh, I think we've got every opportunity to go 4-0 and into bye week this year. And uh, it, it all starts with game one. Can't go 4-0 and until you go 1-0. and And so that's our first, uh, you know, focus there is getting that done. Coming out of the bye week, uh, we definitely get into the, the meat and potatoes of our conference and some of those bigger teams. Um, it's nice to not have to go all the way to Bellhaven this year and have them at home. Uh, but we'll, we'll travel to uh, – to a couple different ones. We go to LaGrange, we go to Huntington, and so those, those will be our other two away games. So very fortunate in playing some of these big teams. Oh, we go to uh, Brevard, that's the other one. But I'll tell you, you know, as we go into this, uh, this is a team that if we can get that momentum early and we can keep it rolling, I think we're going to be a pretty dangerous team to go against as that season rolls on and as our experience continues to grow and our leadership really steps up there. Yeah, so how excited are you? You mentioned it a little bit, but, like, you got six home games this year. Um, so how does that potentially help you guys just from, you know, you, you may not, you're not traveling as much as you did last year. Yeah. You've got the comfort of, you know, again, playing on Pride Field. So how excited are you to have six home games? Oh, that big time. You know, just not have to travel. There, there's a great part of the traveling overnight games because you get that bonding, team camaraderie stuff. But, you know, there's a, an even more special part when you're at home, on your own field, represent in front of your family, your teammates, your classmates, your professors, all that. And so to have six of them this year, we're, we're very excited about that. Um, you know, starting off with the Super Bowl being such an intense and, and big game. Um, and then, you know, trying to get, you know, we'll have our senior day at the end. Uh, we're looking at doing a couple other special games as it goes, uh, trying to get our uh, local Little Leagues involved in coming out to some of these home games and uh, just uh, doing a blackout game again this year. So 
it, it's fun to be at home. It, it takes a lot of stress out of playing the game. Sure. And, you know, our field and everything is its a special place. We practice there every day. Uh, you know, we, we love it. We kind of know what to expect out of it. And now we get to bring people here and see what kind of a great place this is. Awesome. So let's transition now. Um, I wanted to talk about your assistance. Um, how important is it from a recruiting standpoint and then also, you know, just being able to build chemistry as a team to have so many assistants returning this year? Because uh, sometimes you can get that staff turned over. You know, other guys are going to different places. You know, most of your assistants are coming back. Um, yeah. So how important is that from a chemistry standpoint? Uh, very big. You know, um, in my way of thinking, a an assistant coach becomes exponentially better every year. You just – you learn the systems. You learn who to recruit, how to recruit. You uh, learn how to develop those relationships better with your players. You know, that first year, it's always kind of getting to know each other and learn. Then those second and third years when those real relationship developments happen. And so uh, we're very fortunate. We, we lost one uh, assistant coach this year um, with Coach Ellison, former player of ours, all-conference player. Um, he had a great opportunity to go get his master's degree, so we wish him all kinds of luck. Um, we're able to replace him actually with um, – with three different part-time guys that are going to come in and help us, all three local, um, that are going to be able to kind of be around and, and get to know our guys. So it, in the exchange of having him who had been here since I first got here to, you know, these three, it's going to help us get a little more one-on-one -on -one time with our players. Um, but, you know, having that, that consistency and that continuity just really helps. Now you're not, as a coordinator, you're not teaching every assistant coach what to do. They know the expectation. They know how to do it. Even the players know the expectation and how to do it. So they know what to expect. You can start to play faster. You can start to, you know, continue to build those trusts and, and those uh, relationships around each other. Awesome. So uh, last thing, we want to um, talk a little bit about just your, your newcomers, the incoming class. Um, you know, we, we get excited when we, when we look at those recruit classes and, yeah. and the potential that they you might have. Uh, so just kind of, you know, you know, summarize your, your recruiting class this year. Um, and if there's, you know, any in particular that, that might, you know, help out, you know, here in the near future. Yeah, that's a, that's a great one. Um, you know, for us, uh, this is a great recruiting class. I mean, we, we hit our number early on. A lot of guys were excited and wanted to be here. And that's a big thing for us. We want guys that want to be here. You know, we don't want to – force them. We don't want them to, you know, it's, it's, you got to have that want, that desire to be at Greensboro college. And I think that's what's helped us in our retention as the years have gone. Um, you know, so we're able to bring in some great group of offensive linemen that I'm very excited to see who can step up and make a difference for us. we got a good group coming back. So there's not, you know, a huge need there, but I think there's some guys that can make an impact uh, you know, Jackson Pace is one that comes to mind, Tyson Calder. Uh, we got a bunch of other ones, Keandre Williams, that uh, are some young guys that I really like that I think can come in and, and compete. Um, the tight end spot might be one where we can get some young guys to make a difference early on. Uh, we bring back uh, West Kidd as a senior. Uh, we um, graduated Anthony Horizon and Ryan Buchanan last year, two seniors. So they had the majority of reps, and West was kind of that third guy. Um, under, under that, we got a couple returners, but those young guys are going to have a chance to really build up and grow. Actually, Wes's uh, younger brother, Matthew Kidd, uh, signed with us. And, um, you know, he's, say, younger brother, but he might be as big or bigger than his younger brother right now. So um, we're excited about his development. Um, at the receiver spot, um, I like the fact we got some long, tall receivers that could come in and, and help us out in some places. Um, quarterback spot, you know, two young freshmen that, um, you know, we're excited to see how they grow. Very athletic guys that can give us an added dimension in that part. Um, and then uh, Deion Cannon is a transfer that we're looking to, you know, do some big things. He, he was at uh, East Tennessee State for a, a minute and um, had some opportunities, did a little bit of baseball, but now he's getting back into the football part of it. Um, so we're, we're excited to see you know, him come through defensive side. And we actually, you know, in some young guys, we got some returning guys coming back. Uh, um, Baines is coming back as a safety for us. 
And, you know, he, he played a significant amount his first two years here and then went uh, somewhere else for a year and just coming back. Um, we got some other young corners and a couple, you know, transfers there from some NAI programs and some D, uh, Division II programs that I think could come in and make some, some hay for us. And I'm really excited about our kicking group, too. You know, we're, we're coming in this year with four kickers. That's the most I've had since I've been here. Um, but it brings a lot of competition into that group. And, and those three young guys we got coming in, we've got to know them. We got to meet them over the summer. And they came out and kicked a few times. And, and I'm telling you, they're, they're bought in. They're ready to go. And so it's exciting to see that. Um, at the linebacker spot, um, you know, we've got a few young guys that I'm hoping to see really jump up and do some big things. Uh, we joke about uh, Cody Seeger's one that it might be uh, Max 2.0. So uh, we'll watch this film. So we're hoping he can, you know, develop and do some good stuff too. Um, Shane Payne is very athletic and long and can run, um, just to name a few. But um, it's been fun. It's been a great recruiting class. We've been able to get a ton of North Carolina guys. We've got a lot more in-state local guys. Uh, we did a, a great job up in Winston, uh, Forsyth County. Um, of getting some players there, some big names, uh, Cassidy from Reagan. Um, you know, we've got a number of guys, two or three guys from Mount Tabor as well. Um, so it's, it's fun. We're, we're, we're excited about this group and how they're going to develop. Awesome. Well, Coach Carr, thank you so much for joining us. Be sure to follow the football program on social media as well as Greensboro College Athletics. Go to GreensboroCollegeSports.com for the football schedule, the roster, and all the information you need to know for the 2024 season.